So this device looks like a phone and feels like a phone and interacts like a phone, but yet it's not a phone at all. It's what they're calling a phone-like AR companion. So today we're gonna figure out what exactly that means. And to do that, let's first take a look at the current state of this kind of tech. Where on one end of the spectrum, we have smartphone-based uh, augmented reality. And on the total opposite end of the spectrum, dedicated hardware headsets like the, uh, the Quest and the Apple Vision Pro. And these frankly make for some absolutely in insane experiences, especially with pass-through. And so those are the two extremes. But now somewhere in the middle, we have this setup, this kind of hybrid AR tech from Xreal, who, if you're not familiar with, have been making these AR glasses for a couple of years now. In 2024, the Air 2 Pros are the flagship model. And the way these work, instead of having a camera that can capture, whoops, instead of using a camera to capture the world around you and digitally display it back to you, well, you can just see directly through it like sunglasses. But then there's also two built-in micro OLED displays on top of each lens that can project stuff on top of what you're seeing as long as these are plugged into something. And that something has historically been a smartphone or like a gaming device like the Steam Deck. You just basically plug in a USB-C. But now just this year, they've also released this as another thing to plug the glasses into. And this is the Xreal Beam Pro, what they're calling a phone-like AR companion device. Because again, like I said earlier, this is not a phone. There's quite literally no way to make or receive phone calls on here through your carrier. And there's not even space for a SIM card. This is just for an SD card. But despite all that, this is about as close as you can get to being a phone without being a phone. So why exactly did they build this and how was it optimized for AR glasses? Like, why would you ever use this over top of your own smartphone? Well, there's a few main differences that stand out to me right away. The first being these cameras on the backside. It might not be obvious initially, but this kind of weird separated camera setup is a huge differentiator between this and say an iPhone or an Android when it comes to capturing and creating 3D concepts. And it's really because, well, you know, the way that you and I perceive depth is because we have two eyeballs that are a few inches apart with one of the eyes seeing a slightly different angle than the other eye. And if we take a look at the distance between my two eyes and compare that against the distance between the two lenses here, well, as you can see, it starts to make sense why this setup might be able to better capture stereoscopic images and videos than other devices. And that really is one of the huge selling points. You can just capture 3D content, photos and videos directly on this device. And although you can't view that content on this device in 3D, guess what you can do it on? You guessed it, the glasses. Which brings me to the next part of this device that stands out from a normal phone, which is the bottom here, where you can see that there's two ports instead of one. Now, one of these ports is for your basic charging, 27 watts, but the other one is made specifically for pairing with the extra glasses. Check it out, there's even a little sunglasses symbol right next to it. And so if you take that USB-C cable from the glasses and plug it into the Beam Pro, you'll see that it switches over to this controller mode. And now that they're connected, not only is the extra Beam Pro producing the content that I'm seeing through the glasses, I can also use this as a controller and just point in the virtual space and I can tap on the screen to select apps and to type and interact. So because of that, it's kind of serving those two purposes. It's producing the content and allowing you to use it as a controller in this phone-like form factor that we're already all kind of used to using. And now the last thing about this device itself that stands out is this little red button that you can see on the side of here right above the, uh, the volume rock. If nothing's plugged in, so if I take the glasses off and I press this red button, as you can see, it just opens the camera. But if I were to instead plug the glasses back in, pressing this red button switches between two modes, basically where you can leave the screen projected on say like a single spot in space, or you can have that virtual screen follow your head wherever you look. So I would say that those are really the three main differentiators between this and like a normal smartphone. And you can see how just those little steps make it optimized for this like AR glasses content. But now I'm curious, just how well does this combination work? in the real world for playing video games, doing work, making content and consuming content. Really, I wanna see which of these four activities are my least favorite and which one is my most favorite to use in this kind of hybrid AR setup. Starting off with consuming content, which I figured I'd do laying down since that seems like the benefit of a hands-free experience. And while you can watch your typical short form content like TikTok shorts and IG reels in this setup, honestly, I found that horizontal content definitely better fills up the entire projected screen real estate given its horizontal aspect ratio. So ultimately I found myself laying here watching YouTube and Netflix over those uh, short form ones. I feel like normally if you're watching content like on your phone in bed, you can like, you know, pull a sideways roll with the glasses, you can still lay sideways, but 
your head definitely presses against like the side of them, but definitely works better if you're laying on your back, which convenient for me, I am a back sleeper. So I could just lay here like this for hours. Honestly, the main downside of this use case is that I'm a little too comfy. I'm like 50% more likely to just straight up fall asleep in this position. <laughs> I don't hate this though. For consuming content, preemptively, I'm saying this was like pretty solid. But next up, I wanna try what I think is the most difficult use case of this setup, and that's productivity. It's kind of the space that these AR and VR markets are really trying to figure out to try to make it way more mainstream. But it's also seemingly one of the harder things to ingrain. And so with that said, my expectations were kind of low for this one. And so I put it to the test of basically seeing if I could clear out my entire inbox without, you know, getting super annoyed. And so conveniently, Gmail was one of the uh, pre-installed apps on the device. So I could just click that, open it up. And so, like I said, you can use the gyroscope in the Beam Pro, or you can also just swipe on the device itself, which was a lot more natural for me to do. Now, navigating the inbox is like the easy part, but responding to emails is where this could potentially fall apart. But this form factor has one other trick up its sleeve, which is that you can just use the built-in keyboard on this device to respond. You don't have to do that, you know, that really awkward thing with other VR, AR apps where you type each letter individually. I'll be honest, I hate that interaction. And this bypasses that by just having the keyboard pull up on the screen so you can just type like normal. So even though that was not awful, the thing that really made this stand out is that well, this is running Android 14, which means you can connect Bluetooth devices to it. Meaning that if you have a Bluetooth keyboard or a Bluetooth mouse, guess what? You can use those as input devices. Now, would I use this setup over my existing laptop or desktop? Probably not. But again, this is a much more mobile potential setup. So if I was on a train ride, for example, and didn't have my laptop packed and obviously not my gaming PC packed, having this projected display and a Bluetooth keyboard would probably make me way more productive than just typing on my phone itself. So that legitimately did surprise me. So I would rate productivity like a strong seven out of 10, especially if it's situational where you don't have a laptop or a computer, which does seem to be the place where it would be the most beneficial. Now, this concept of using a Bluetooth connected device to to augment even further this whole experience comes into play with the next use case as well, which is gaming. And to test that out, I needed to download some new games. We'll go ahead with like a driving game. That'd be pretty fun. Maybe Minecraft. Oh, that's still $7. All right, we'll do a bootleg Minecraft. And this is where another benefit of this, this form factor comes into play. Because it's running Android 14, any app that you can download on the Play Store, you can use on the glasses and with this device. The tagline that Xreal uses themselves for this combination is millions of apps for your AR glass. Glasses, and it really is millions. Compare that against the Apple Vision Pro or the, you know, the Meta Quest where you need to have developers developing specific apps for those things. So the plus side here is that, you know, if someone makes it for the phone, you can, you can view it on the glasses. And so to really put this use case to the test, I wanted to do it outside in like direct sunlight on noon on a perfectly sunny day. And I'll be honest, this really did take me off guard. There's this feature called electrochromic dimming with the glasses that basically artificially dims the light that is, is getting through to your eyes. That works surprisingly well. And it's crazy how well it works. You can see my hand clearly through the glasses. And then if you set the, the dimming to like its darkest area, now you can't see it at all. It's nuts. It basically makes it so when I'm sitting outside in direct sunlight, it's dark. But okay, so the way that video games work is it projects just like the 2D screen up on, you know, that larger screen. The Xreal Air 2 Pros, the glasses that I'm using in this video, technically they're able to have a screen size from 91 to 222 inches. But with the Beam Pro, it basically boils that down to like a medium and a large setting. And so when I started playing that, the Minecraft uh, knockoff, you're again able to play it in that vertical mode as well as the horizontal mode. I like horizontal better. And then you can use the touch screen or the gyroscope to point and click to control the game like that, which I did find a bit awkward. Mainly because if you're used to clicking on a phone and just using that as input, you now have to use this device to touch a virtual screen to then interact that way. But again, going back to the Android 14 Bluetooth connectivity, I just connected the controller and that was like way nicer. And then I also found out that you could play these games side by side. I legitimately did not know that you could do this. And the wild part is like the performance didn't seem to falter at all. You can play the Minecraft knockoff on the right hand side here while also playing the driving game simultaneously. And then all you have to do is like click over here to start controlling that one one and click over here to start controlling this one. It legitimately worked surprisingly well. Now the glasses themselves do have 120 hertz of refresh rate, meaning that the games look really smooth, especially considering that two of them are running side by side. And this legitimately blew my mind, but you know, how realistic is it to play two video games simultaneously at the same time? 
Not as much as playing, say, one video game and then consuming content on the other side. So on this side, I have a YouTube video playing some League of Legends content. And over here, we can switch back to our Minecraft game and it's it's seamless. Now, unfortunately, the FOV of the glasses is restricted to 46 degrees right now. And so you can't fully see both of these when they're both in that wide mode. Now, if they are both in vertical mode, you could definitely see uh, both of them in entirely. But that's something that I see as just getting better and better with this kind of technology. Sorry about that. My mic died, so I'm going to use this one instead. I was not expecting this setup to be so enticing to play games and consume content simultaneously on. This is for sure the, my favorite way to use this, this setup. It's actually pretty wild, but I do need to test one more use case, which is creating content. Because again, one of the huge differentiators with the Beam Pro is that it has this camera set up with these two 50 megapixel cameras that can each capture their own images. And, and so because of that, creating content is really as simple as just using a normal smartphone to click, record, take pictures, record videos. But you still just press the big red button and afterwards you still just get a file output. Although with the Beam Pro to make it stereoscopic, it actually produces two images, one from each of those cameras. The main thing to note here is that the 3D videos captured with this device are 1080p and 60 FPS, which I believe is higher than even like iPhones that can capture 3D content. It's really good. But the major downside is like the inaccessibility of like where to share and where to consume type of content that you can create. Now, like I said, obviously you can watch your own 3D content on the glasses themselves, and it does look really cool because there are individual screens on each of these lenses. It can play back that stereoscopic, you know, side by side and your brain sees it as 3D. It's also very crazy and something that unfortunately doesn't come across with like a YouTube video. But say, for example, you took a 3D photo of your dog and wanted to share it with your grandmother. How in the world would she view it? Unless she also has a setup like this or a 3D tablet or a 3D TV or something like that. You know, it's just not as mainstream to consume 3D content like it is our 2D content on our phones. So ultimately that's the biggest limitation of creating content with this setup. Although this does make capturing 3D way easier than ever before. So with that, if I had to rank these four use cases with this setup, consuming content and gaming simultaneously, 100% top, top tier, top tier for sure. By and far my favorite way to use this setup. Now with number two, I'm actually going to say creating content was my second favorite thing to do. Mainly because if I'm just looking at it from the perspective of creating the content, well, I make a lot of content and I'm really used to using phones to just press record and go. And this lets me do that except for in 3D. So I'm not rating it in terms of consuming and distributing the 3D content, but just creating 3D content with this device super straightforward, which means that kind of as expected, productivity was my least favorite thing to do on this uh, device. Like I said, it's likely very situational. If I was on a train and didn't have a laptop, I, I would use this. But when I'm at home and I have access to like a laptop, I'm still likely going to use that for the time being. Oh, but how would I rate gaming and consuming content individually? Consuming content, I would rate over top of gaming if we separate those out individually, mainly because I really liked just laying back in like the dark when everyone else was asleep. And one thing I haven't mentioned Mentioned, these glasses do have speakers built right into them so you can hear content without having to put you know earbuds in or something like that so i did like just laying down and basically looking up at the ceiling and getting like my own personal like movie theater so that was nice and gaming you know like i said the controls were a little bit awkward it was a lot more helpful when you could plug in a bluetooth device but, but i definitely see myself consuming content on this more than playing games if that makes sense at this point i would say i have a pretty good sense of this phone like ar companion and all things considered it is a little weird you know i think it's best described by a quote from Xreal themselves when asked about how they're planning on impacting the VR market, where they said, Apple has shown us the future of spatial computing with the Vision Pro. We hope to show you the present. And I like that quote because it does feel the most realistic to wear out in public than any of the other dedicated hardware that we've seen so far. I would say besides this cable between them, you know, sunglasses are already an everyday carry for a lot of people out there and phones are just the most ubiquitous piece of tech that has ever existed. So wearing this out in public isn't gonna have a lot of people bat an eye unlike if you're, you know, riding the subway or walking down the street like this. It's still just a bit too dystopian. And the other reason it feels like the present is the price the Beam Pro standalone is just under $200 and even cheaper when bundled together with like the extra glasses. I'll leave a link down below for all of the current deals. But price point wise, it has landed in the middle of that spectrum. Which brings me to my biggest question about this device and one that you should probably be asking as well, which is, should this just be a phone? <laughs> like it's kind of crazy that it's basically everything a phone can do 
except for make a call. And while we've covered all of these optimizations that do make it better for AR, and I think a lot of them do make sense and make for a better experience than just using a phone, but it leads to this conundrum where are you going to be carrying around two of these phone-like devices in your pocket in your everyday carry, along with the glasses themselves? Because all of a sudden, if you do want to carry around and walk around with an AR experience, but you also want a phone, this is what you're gonna be carrying around. And it's not the craziest thing in the world, like both of these will fit in your pocket totally fine, and then, I don't know, you just carry glasses like normal glasses. But I think some of you are gonna say, yeah, I have no problem carrying around an extra device, but I think some of you might say that's a little too much. But I'm curious to know your thoughts. As sort of a middle ground present day AR solution, what do you think of the Xreal Beam Pro as sort of that phone-like AR companion? Is it something that you would consider using? Let me know why or why not. Huge shout out to Xreal for sending over the Xreal Beam Pro plus the Xreal Air 2 Pro glasses for me to play around with. I'll go ahead and leave links for both of them in the description down below if you'd like to learn more. And with that, I've been Mr. Yeaster, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.